Good morning and welcome. Please join me in the call to worship. The earth is the Lord's and all that is in it, the world and those who live in it. We belong, we belong to God. God. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. In God we find life, abundant life, everlasting life. Give, and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, will be put into your lap. For the measure you give will be the measure you get back. We give ourselves to God. We worship with our lives. Let us worship in prayer and praise, in word and deed. Let us worship God. Please stand if you are able for our opening hymn, The Old Rugged Cross, number 484 in the left hymn. Well, it's not a big leap after singing about that old rugged cross. And I had the benefit of singing it, looking at the extraordinary stained glass window to the back. And so it's not a big leap to go right into a confession of sin. And so let's take a deep breath and go there together. Gracious God, sometimes I look around and compare myself to others to make myself feel better. Sometimes it makes me feel worse. In this moment, I come as I am, just me. And you know me. You know my heart. You know my thoughts. You know me at my best. You know me at my worst. Nothing is hidden from you. I'm grateful that in Christ Jesus, I have nothing to fear. You love for me is from everlasting to everlasting. I don't need to do anything to earn it. And your sole desire is that I love you back. I do this imperfectly in ways that I confess to you now. Well, I guess the best assurance of pardon is that to know that that old rugged cross is empty. It, it did the, Jesus did the work on that cross that he came to do. And that is to ensure that you and I are completely forgiven. And that is good news. So please stand. Let's sing that good news together. Living God, help us to hear your holy word, that we may truly understand, that understanding we may believe, and believing we may follow in all faithfulness, seeking your honor and glory in all that we do. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our first scripture reading, which we will read together, is from 1 Timothy chapter 6, verses 17 through 19. Let us begin. As for those who in the present age are rich, command them not to be haughty or to set their hopes in the uncertainty of riches, but rather on God, who richly provides us with everything for our enjoyment. They are to do good, to be rich in good works, generous and ready to share thus storing up for themselves the treasure of a good foundation for the future, so that they may take hold of the life that really is life. Our second scripture lesson, it comes from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 21, verses 1 through 4, but I actually wanted to start a little, uh, a little before that, uh, because it sets up what, uh, what 
the, the verses one through four. So starting at verse 45 of chapter 20, in the hearing of all the people, Jesus said to the disciples, beware of the scribes who like to walk around in long robes <laughs> and love to be greeted with respect in the marketplaces and to have the best seat in the synagogues and places of honor at banquets. They devour widows' houses and for the sake of appearance, say long prayers. They will receive the greater condemnation. He looked up and saw rich people putting their gifts into the treasury. He also saw a poor widow put in two small copper coins. He said, truly, I tell you, this poor widow has put in more than all of them, for all of them have contributed out of their abundance, but she, out of her poverty, has put in all that she had to live on. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us join our hearts in prayer. Gracious God, I pray that the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts might be acceptable in your sight, for you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So the moral of the story is that when you pass the plate this morning, give everything you have. Amen. <laughs> that was easy. All right. Thank you, Jesus. Only kidding. <laughs> I chose this passage because I was thinking about how we don't know. We don't know that we, you know, we look at other people and we make judgments and, you know, we think, you know, this one's so generous or this one's so cheap or this one, da, 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 da. And we don't know. Don't, don't even go there, you know, end of story. But as I researched this passage, I discovered that Jesus isn't lifting up the women's, the women's generosity. He's really critiquing the religious legal experts, the scribes who Jesus says walk around in long robes, love to be greeted with respect in the synagogue and the marketplaces, have the best seats in the, in the synagogues. That's funny because Margaret and I were just complaining how uncomfortable these seats are, just, <laughs> just, just so you know. And places at, in, of honor at banquets. And then he says this, they devour widows' houses and for the sake of appearance, say long prayers. And then he tells the story, then notice this widow, widow, they devour widows' houses. Widows, it was thought, could not manage their own money because they're women. Hmm. Thanks. So they would hire scribes to manage their finances for them. That was the practice. And guess what? Embezzlement and abuse followed. They devoured widows' houses. And who told this woman, woman that she needed to give everything that she had, even what she had to live on in order to honor God. A corrupt system. Jesus has taken on the temple. The next passage is about the destruction of Jerusalem. Jesus is not calling us to put everything that we have to live on in the offering plate. He's calling out institutions that mismanage people's funds and take advantage of the weak. This is a great stewardship sermon, isn't it? <laughs> Woo -hoo! I recently had a conversation with a new friend who was saying that she wants to be generous with the church, but she's unhappy with how they manage the funds. And I thought about that since. I remember my home church years ago that I grew up in. Uh, decided to withhold funds from the hold, withhold their funds from the larger denominations because of a stance that the, that the denomination took. Now I disagreed with my with my the elders of my church on it, but I said that's a dangerous precedent. And I I do think sometimes it's necessary, absolutely. But I'm like, what if people do that to you and you know from the pews because they don't like the curriculum or they don't like. Uh, they don't like the color of the carpet, you know, or, and, and the folks who, you know, who, you know, uh, do that, where it's more of a threat than a conversation. But I've been sitting with that, um, with that question. And I'm coming back to get to the things that give you joy. And, and on, you know, on behalf of churches every, everywhere, I would say, you know, lift up your concerns. I would be more generous if I would feel better about my giving if not making it a threat, like, you know, I'm going to take my toys and go home, but 
you know, I, I'm concerned because I love God and I love this church and and if it's said in honesty and love, you know, for the mutual, you know, building up, then it's worth being said. But what's challenging is that, you know, we all have different reasons for giving. You know, what's important to one will not be important to another. What gives me joy may not give you joy. I personally wish that every church had a huge endowment so that not one dime of the money that I give to the church had to do to have to be paid for building expenses. And so many of our churches are getting older and, that, and that's requiring more money, you know, and I really wish that, you know, all of our churches had had the foresight to set up a huge endowment so that not one dime, all my money could go to mission and ministry. But I know that for some folks, that's, they want their money to go to brick and mortar that that's what jazzes them, that they like you know, the idea of their money being used to preserve the place that has been so dear to them. That's why, that's why they're motivated to give. And I, and it's, I, years ago, I, I uh, had a pastor and every year he has another, he does a pulpit swap for stewardship sermon because he never wants to feel like he's raising his own salary. And I, and by the way, I don't, I don't really struggle with that, but, uh, but knowing all of this, Knowing that the money that you give to the church, there are some very sexy line items like keeping the lights on. Uh, but there's also buying curriculum for kids so that they can learn about Jesus. There's also snow plowing and buying bread and juice so that we can celebrate communion together. You, know, you get it. Uh, this morning, you're going to be asked to prayerfully consider what your giving will be for Grace Presbyterian Church in the coming year for 2022. And you will be given, uh, later in the service, an estimate of giving card, not a pledge card, but an estimate of giving. A pledge, uh, moving away from the pledge language, because some people, because they made that pledge, even you know, to their own detriment, they will fulfill that pledge. I've seen it happen, where somebody loses their job, they have no money, but darn it all, I made that pledge to the church. So I just, you know, on behalf of the church, I want to say, hey, if you have some catastrophe, it, we're good. We're good. It's an estimate of giving. Um, but also, hey, if you get a raise, are you coming into a lot of money? <laughs> Here we are. Right? So that's why I say it's an estimate uh, based, on, based on, on your own finances. Right? Life happens. Uh, to summarize previous sermons, we've been talking about living simply, living below our means so that we can know more freedom and less stress and have more money, uh, no more joy, because then we're able to be more generous. And being generous gives us joy. Uh, we've talked about the lies that our culture tells us that we need more and more stuff to be happy, uh, and it can actually enslave us. Or, and the issue that so many folks have of instant gratification and of uh, credit cards talking about credit cards, and that that can get people into trouble. And we gave them fun names, affluenza and credititis, right? <laughs> we suffer from those. Uh, but we also talked about how, uh, how we use our money, our financial decisions are actually spiritual decisions. If you want to know what your priorities are, look at your finances at, at the end of the month. They will tell you a story about what you value. Right? So today I want to undermine the fact that we all have a spiritual need to give a spiritual need. Uh, and I'm not saying it all has to, to go to Grace Presbyterian, but we all have a need to be connected to something bigger than ourselves. To be part of, to know that we are using the blessings that God has given us to be a force for good in the world. That this is one of the ways that we get to love God and love neighbor and love self is through our giving and our generosity. For me, I actually think this is one of the easiest ways uh, to reassure myself that my priorities are straight. You know, I, my deepest desire is to be faithful to God. And you know, do I always live out of that deepest desire? For me, actually, one of the easiest ways is to write that check. And, and like, all the other ways, Lord, that I know this is one way that I, that I, that can, I'm, can be faithful. Uh, but I know it's not hard. I know, well, not hard. I know it's, um, I have always tithed since I was a, since I, I, I tithe my babysitting money, folks. Mm -hmm. 
Um, you know, when yeah, I, I believe the pastor. <laughs> <laughs> So funny, uh, and and then I um, my well, I don't want to tell any stories on anything that I, that I love, but you know, you know, what do you mean? But that, but the pastor, you know, and then huh? But so if you've done it for an early age, it's not that hard. Uh, but I've also been in a place where uh, income has been lost, and and I said this a couple of weeks ago. That's when you go estimate given. Uh, make sure you have a roof over your head and food in your stomachs and clothes on your back. And then once you figure that all out, right? So I get it. Um, last week we spoke about getting to things, people, ministries that give you joy. And I hope that giving to Grace Presbyterian Church gives you joy. Um, and I would love to list all the wonderful things that, that you're doing that I've observed since I've been here that you can be proud of. But during this COVID I haven't gotten to see all of these things in action, but I know that throughout COVID, MESH, and for the newcomers, people talk about MESH, MESH is a ministry of food to the homeless that happens here every Saturday and happens throughout COVID. Uh, been ongoing, feeding people, showing them a movie if the DVD player works, uh, and, and learning folks' names through the ministry of this church. You, support, you supported local food pantries on a monthly basis. And I hope you all saw the, the wonderful photo of, of Bob Rowe with the little shopping cart, dropping off all those soup cans at Montclair Inn. And they immediately posted a thank you on their social media. media. We shared it. But you know, we get to be part of that. Praise God. It makes you feel wonderful and proud to be part of the church. Uh, did you know that Jody Walsh is the Mrs. Rogers of Glen Ridge? <laughs> And that we have had up to 12 kids running around that beautifully manicured, manicured lawn outside on Sunday mornings while we've been sitting here. That's a, that's, that's a blessing. Praise God. And um, another blessing that happened this week, the Garden Club donated 100 tulip bulbs uh, to the church. I think I, I'm like, what a great town. <laughs> they're, 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 they're handing out tulip bulbs for people. To, to plant on their property to make, you know, to make it your, your town pretty. Um, and the beauty of flowers, and, and, I've, and I've said this before, I have played with gardening by COVID plenty of time. I'm all in. And when gardeners are very gracious, generous people, and it, it, they find each other. And this I didn't realize. Now, um, I, I look at my garden and there's a little rose bush and my mother-in-law and my husband bought that. And that makes me think of them. And this other little rose bush, my mother and I were walking through Walmart and it was $8.99. <laughs> and it has done beautifully. And when I look at it, it makes me think of my mother. And this one, my sister-in-law. And the executive presbyter of Highlands Presbytery, where I have been for the last 20 years, is a gardener. And she calls me up, Robin, you want some daisies? Robin, you want some yarrow? Robin, you want some comfort? Yes, 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 yes. So I'm seeing Jean all over my, all over my garden. So I was told by Allison this week that uh, Sharon Carlson, yes. yeah. who used to volunteer with MESH, used to be the, the, the tulip bulb planter here at the church. If you would like to honor Sharon with me and help me plant those bulbs outside, let's, let's do that in honor of her so that when we, we look at those tulips, we think of her. See me after the service. I think that would be a lovely tribute to her. Um, other things that are going on. December 19th, we're going to have a children's Advent Sunday. Animalitos, little animals are going to come. Uh, they're going to be outside. And so things are starting back up. Uh, Season with Grace is planning a, a Christmas shindig. Uh, women are reading about an Ignatian spirituality uh, with Margo. And ladies, don't stress, there will be a book group uh, once Margo goes to Arizona. Uh, so don't sweat it. But all these things are going on and things are happening. And I want to plant a seed for the men. Uh, I have been in churches where there's a thriving men's ministry. If the spirit is whispering in your ear, you know, we, we, sh we should really have like a men's fellowship breakfast or uh, meet at a diner and, and do a, a book study or just gather. Um, 
may may my voice sound like the spirit shouting <laughs> two of you just need two of you to to make that a thing and unfortunately i can't do it because i will change the dynamic so but i i male friendships and a place where you can be real and you can pray for one another and you can do that that spiritual friendship thing i think is is really key so i hope the spirit is just Mm. On, on a couple guys right now. Uh, and just little things to celebrate going on in the church. We had a professional come and, and run internet through the building, and it's all reliable, and it all works. And praise God. You might not appreciate this, but the, we hear, yes, praise the Lord. Deeply devoted Christian, the, the guy who installed it. And I just said to him, I said, you know, I can just tell that you live in gratitude. And he goes, oh, how can I not? How can I not? And I just, you know, just little blessings and things like that. Uh, and I, this, we put this out to a friend of Warner's. And we got this, her, you know, four valves. I've been given the tour. There's four valves to that boiler. One wasn't working. The Christian education wing, there was no heat. We got an estimate for like $5,500. And Warner has a friend. And the friend said, oh, let me come look at it. Two and a half hours later, it works, right? And he feels good because he got to help the church. We're like, oh, thank you, Jesus, right? And it's just like those little things that make you just praise God, the blessings. And that's what we're about. How can we be a blessing? How can we be a blessing to this community? How can we be a blessing with our money? You know, churches die that focus on themselves. You know, like, uh, what's in it for me? And that, those are, we call those membership churches. Like, what do I get for my membership? That's like country club. You know, I pay and I get this, right? Discipleship churches are about how can I serve this community? How can I, you know, what are we called to do? Love God, love neighbor, and love self. How do I get to love God, neighbor, and self through this church? That's what we're called to do. That's why we exist. Uh, my first church as a solo pastor, I was an associate pastor for three years, and then I became the, uh, the solo pastor for, of a small church in, in Wharton. And small churches are always worried about their survival. And I said, don't, don't worry about it. As long as we are being the church, there will always be a church. If we forget what it means to be a church, then there's no reason for us to be, and God has no investment in our being. So let's just worry about whether we are making Jesus known in word and deed, whether we are making the love of God known in word and deed. The church is still around, that little church. It's got its issues. You've got your issues. Every church has their issues. Why? Because we're filled with people, right? It's unavoidable. But through this human-filled church, lives have been changed. Children have been baptized. Young people confirmed. Marriages, funerals, Bach cantatas, gospel choirs, had to watch a video uh, yesterday of gospel choir. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Hope has been given and or restored in these pews and through this church. Bridges have been built. Lifelong friendships have been forged. Joy has been overflowing. Not since I've been here. <laughs> and I got to tell you, the, my first week here, I came in and I was like, oh, there's despair. There is despair in the room when I got here. But not anymore, thank you, God. <laughs> that would have been hard. Like, oh, Lord, have mercy. No, that's lifted, but we're not, we're not at the point where anybody's doing the shit. But we're on our way. Uh, together, we get to figure out how to live our lives in love and give hope to break chains, to sing and dance, to love on little kids, to hold the hands of those who need a hand to hold, to make it up the stairs, or just to know that somebody's with them, to remind one another that we are not in this all alone. I heard the story of a rousing sermon that was actually given in Africa, and it was about giving your all to Christ. And the plate was passed, and this woman had nothing to put in the plate, not two dimes. 
So she, she took the plate from, from the usher and put it on the floor and then stood in it <laughs> and said, all of me. I give all of me. In response to God's love, we are called to love God with our whole selves, with all that we have. This morning, you were asked to prayerfully consider what level of support the Spirit is calling you to give financially to Grace Presbyterian Church for 2022. There's lots of good that you can do with your money. Um, you will be given an estimate of giving card again uh, during, and then be asked to prayerfully uh, to pray on it before you hand it in. If you are visiting with us and you are given one of those cards, you are being given a bookmark. Do not feel <laughs> that you have to feel, fill that out. No pressure to give, never any pressure to give. Uh, if you need time to pray over this, take it. If you have questions or concerns, please ask them in the coming days, in the weeks and weeks. But and, and this is my job to just ask you to make it a prayerful decision one that's made in conversation with God, to pray about it, to fill it out, and then look at, look at that card and, and just say, do you have a sense of peace about it? Does it give you joy? And then to God be the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Please join me for our affirmation of faith, stewardship. We believe in God, creator of the universe, giver of every good gift, author of life itself. We believe in Jesus Christ, who reminded us of the coming of God's kingdom, who commanded us to care for those in need, who taught us to store up treasures in heaven, not on earth, and who gave us the example of self-giving love. We believe in the Holy Spirit, who inspires us to faithful stewardship of God's gifts, in whom we live and move and have our being, by whom all things are possible. We believe that God has given us gifts to be shared freely and generously in a spirit of love and joy. We acknowledge that we are merely stewards of all the best gods, caretakers of God's home. We believe that faithful stewardship is an act of worship, a means of praising God who has blessed us so abundantly. We believe that God has great things in store for us, for it is in the giving that we receive. Why give money to Grace Presbyterian Church? Why, why do I do that? Well, as a family, and now as an individual, we have just always have done that. And I don't think we've ever stopped to think of why we did it. But you know, with my small contribution, perhaps some of that money could go towards salary for a minister, or maybe some of that money would help to pay off the electric bill. I like it when there's a mission project that requires financing, maybe a meal and shelter for a homeless person, or clear drinking water and new wells for people in needy countries. On, on a Sunday when I'm sitting in front of my computer, listening to the church service through Zoom, when it's time for the offertory and the doxology, I just thank the Lord that with my small contribution, I can be part of the life and ministry of Grace Presby Presbyterian Church. Thank you, Jean Tim. Hmm. And for, and just so you folks know, there we've got 18 different folks watching from home. So I just, the table is expanded, which is a total praise to the Lord. Um, so 
for the first time in many, many months, we are going to take the offering while sitting in the pews. You will also be given that estimate of giving card. I would invite you to use the time as, as Anna was playing offertory to pray on it. You don't have to like quick fill it out and put it in, in, in the plate because you know, pastor told me to pray about it, but she didn't say I had to do it that quickly. Um, no, to, you know, if you need to take it home and pray on it, please do. Um, they'll also be in, in the, at the back of the service afterwards. It's, but again, make it a spiritual decision. But again, always, never any pressure to give. If you believe in the mission and the ministry of this church, you are invited to give and support it as generously as you can. Uh, with that in mind, let us continue our worship through the giving of our tithes and our offerings. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you uh, for all your good gifts to us. Uh, if nothing else, we say thank you. We ask that you take these gifts and may they, use be, may they be used wisely. Give our leaders discernment. And we pray that they might be used to love on this world in your name. In Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Let's continue in an attitude of prayer. Gracious God of a very good creation, you have commanded us to love you with all that we have. And so we ask that you would help us be good stewards of our relationship with you. We ask that you'd open our eyes more and more to see your goodness reflected in creation itself. We bring you our gratitude that we get to live in a garden. And so we join our voices with creation itself in praising you. We are grateful for the abundance of water and food that you put on our tables. And so may we bless your name in this season as we sit each time at a table. Create in us an extravagant generosity parallel to yours so that we can build your kingdom of heaven on earth. Even the little part that each one of us has to play, be clear with us about your call on each one of our lives. And Father, help us as the requests for help flow in in an overwhelming manner through email, through mail, and even by verbal requests. Help us to pick one and sow into that in honor of you and in, in honor of your extravagant generosity to us. Father, you call us to love neighbor. And so we ask that you would make us good stewards of our relationship with one another. Help us to pay attention to hear and to see one another in a, in a deeper and more powerful way so that we can care for one another, know one another better. Again, Father, make us as generous as you to feed and house and support our nearby neighbors, our faraway neighbors. As the holidays come, help us truly to mourn with those who mourn and to rejoice with those who rejoice. Help us to enter in to these relationships in a more powerful way and to reach out to people as your spirit puts them on our hearts. Help us to be good stewards of your creation for the sake of others. Wake us up about our changing planet that you have put into our hands. Help us not to be overwhelmed by what seems as an impossible task. And then you call us to love ourselves. And so help us to be good stewards of ourselves. Call us to Sabbath rest. 
call us to forgiveness, self-forgiveness, kindness to our own selves. Let us sense your pleasure when we give to ourselves and call us to give sacrificially like the widow, knowing that when we sow bountifully, we reap bountifully, even personally, and cure our distraction, Lord. Give us attention and presence so we can be interrupted in our busy lives and called into kingdom encounters that please you. You call us to love your church. And so help us to be good stewards of your church. Keep us poor enough to preach to poor people and humble enough to walk with the homeless. Save us from looking like our world, Lord, so we can travel light like your disciples. And bowl us over with your abundance and love as we move toward Advent. Bowl us over that you give us a savior. You give us a savior's love and that can fuel a hope in us that sustains our every breath. So waken that hope in us so that we can truly become the stewards that you desire for us to be. We present to you because we're stewards of the prayers on our list, the people who ask us to pray. Father, help us to take that seriously when someone asks us to pray. Help us to stop and do it right then so we don't forget. And so we bring you the, the, the people on our list today, the many who need healing, who need guidance, who need hope, who need you, who need us, help, help them answer their prayers and answer ours. In this quiet moment, Lord, we offer you one prayer on our heart that we don't want to carry today out of this building. To so free us up, we present ourselves to you as people who will stand in that offering basket, as living sacrifices, as living stones, so that you can use us as you will, just like you used your disciples, Lord. And so we pray just like them. And we say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory for us. Amen. Right below that hymn, there are these words. The service is, en the service is ended. But our life in Jesus Christ goes on. We go now in his name into all the world. Let our light so shine and our joy be so obvious that all who see us will come to praise God. Amen. Amen. Let us go in peace.